So, uh, did you wash your hands? I did. Good. All right, Dylan, I got a question for you. What, or I should say explain what it means by worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Hey. Welcome to the Bible Bros, the best place on YouTube for, well, Bible stuff. So, thanks for watching. And today we're going to go over what John chapter 4 verse 24 says. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the question is, what is spirit and what is truth? Don't take it away. So the spirit means the attitude that someone has toward worshiping God. So are they worshiping God in a way that they approach it, they want to worship God, they're excited, they have a desire to worship God, or are they kind of dragging their feet and not very enthusiastic about it and it's just kind of going through the motions? In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15, Paul says, What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with understanding. So Paul is passionate about his worship, and that's reflected in the Spirit that he talks about in these verses. Now Paul also mentions the understanding. So where does the understanding that Paul has come from about how to worship? So as we read in John chapter 4, verse 24, that we must worship in spirit and in truth. That truth is the word of God. As we see in Psalms 119, verse 160, the sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. We even see it again, a, uh, a common scripture that we quote a lot here on the show is John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify him through thy truth, thy word is truth. But the understanding, though, that Dylan just read is referring to the Word of God. When you read it and you understand what you need to do. And we see this being played in when it comes to spirit and in truth as well in another verse. And it is Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly, the Word, as we see, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and thankfulness in your hearts to God. So we see the word, we see the action, and we see the emotion and the feeling and the passion to play in all in one setting. And it needs to be an equal balance together. In several places in the book of Matthew, we see the scribes and the Pharisees who are questioning Jesus and his disciples, telling them that they have transgressed the law, being uh, the Jewish law, and also, some laws that weren't even part of the Jewish law that the Pharisees had just made up, basically from, for no reason. So they were saying that Jesus and his disciples were, were transgressing this law, but the scribes and the Pharisees, in their uh, endeavor to preserve this law, they were worshiping or uh, keeping the law in a way that was not, they didn't have the right spirit and they did not have the right truth. Their spirit, rather than being a spirit that was passionate to serve God in the way that he requested of them, their attitude was to try to catch people doing things wrong, try to make as many hoops as possible for people to jump through yeah. and and, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, that completely threw me off. What? You were yeah. like, yeah. You're doing good. Keep sorry. on going. Um, <clears throat> um, but the spirit. But the spirit they should have had there we go. <laughs> was one that 
was to look at what God had given them, look at what Jesus was teaching, and to take that and uh, do exactly what they should have been doing to please God and do it in a way that was passionate and that was uh, wanting to do His will. Their truth was missing in the fact that they were getting their laws, their religion from the wrong place. They were getting it from their own minds, their own feelings of what should have been required for the law, when what they should have been following for their truth was the teaching of Jesus and what had the authority that had been given to Jesus by God and the word that was being preached through Jesus and his disciples. Let's bring in a Christian example into this. If you look at Revelation chapter 3, and we see that Christ is talking to one of the seven churches here. And when you start at verse 14, he starts talking to the church of Laodicea. Now, if you know anything about the church of Laodicea, they, had, they were special in a way. Because they were neither on fire, and they were neither cold for the Lord. And this was because uh, multiple reasons, probably. But think about it in a... a, a a worship aspect of it you're you're neither on fire for God and you're and you're not cold but he says that because you are neither so in verse 16 so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold I will spew you out of my mouth and that's a pretty big deal because we jump down a few more verses and he says in verse 19 those whom I love I repu reprove and discipline so be zealous and repent. To be zealous means you have to have that right emotion, that right meaning behind you're doing something. But at the same time, you have to have the right truth behind it. It's got to have that equal balance. So after studying what it means to worship in spirit and in truth, we should look at our own worship and we should consider, am I worshiping the right way? Do I have the right truth behind my worship? Does my worship come straight from the Bible and straight from God's Word? And after I have the correct worship, then I have to pour in my heart, my passion, my, de my desire to do God's will, and that's the Spirit. You worship God in spirit and in truth, and that's the way that He commands us to worship Him. Word. Do you like chips and salsa? Well, here at the Bible Bros, we love chips and salsa. So therefore, you should subscribe to the Bible Bros. Yep, that's More it. More chips and salsa. More chips and salsa.